Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Dr. Preeti Sharma and I'm your educator on this An Academy platform. All of you know, since yesterday, we started a new series of One Life Cycle a Day, which is at a fixed time of 8.15 on the YouTube channel. And we've planned the day in such a way that I can keep you motivated in three time slots throughout the day. The earliest one gives you a kickstart to a morning, that is the kickstart morning sessions each day at 7.45 a.m. for 45 minutes. We continue on one topic so today was a very fruitful session on lengthy questions which is the need of the hour and tomorrow we are going to talk about staphylococcus important bacteria do read and join this will be on the unacademy app in the evening at 4 30 the second time slot where you might feel a little drowsy post lunch so well at 4 30 we meet again for just 45 minutes on the unacademy app and we discuss a particular topic today we discussed all the inflammatory diseases and tomorrow we'll be talking about a lot of images of granulomas and giant cells well the third time when you might feel low on energy is at 8 15 where we meet only for 10 minutes so a short break in between from your studies and in that 10 minutes we utilize it for learning one life cycle so just a life cycle continue it in the month end of the month you're done with the life cycle. So do you remember what did we study yesterday? Yesterday, we started with the family of the trematodes and we did one of the pulmonary or the lung flukes, which was Paragonimus vestimini. Today, we are talking about the second one and that is the liver fluke. So we did the lung fluke yesterday, the pulmonary yesterday. Today, we'll do the liver fluke and that is Clonorchis sinensis. I'll take it up from exactly where I left yesterday. Do you remember yesterday when we were studying uh, Paragonimus, I told you that for all the trematodes, the definitive host always remains the same, that is man. The first intermediate host always remains the same, that is snail. But yesterday, quickly revise for me, Paragonimus vestimini had which intermediate, second intermediate host, game changer. Second intermediate host over there for Paragonimus was Cara. Crab, crab or crayfish, right? Over here for Clonorchis sinensis, Clonorchis we will remember as Clonorfish. So the second intermediate host is going to be a fish. Let me show you how the life cycle is going to be, then we'll decode it. So I always tell you when I show you a life cycle, pick up the hosts in that life cycle. What do you see out here? You'll say, number one, I see a human. Number two, I see a snail and number three, I see a fish. Okay, so my definitive host is the man. The first intermediate host is the snail and the second intermediate host is the fish. Let us take two minutes and decode this life cycle. Okay, so here we have the man. How did the man get the infection? How did the man get the infection? By consuming fish. So fresh water fish, which form of the organism is the fish carrying? The metasarcaria larva. Fish is carrying the metasarcaria larva and we end up ingesting it. When we eat it, it reaches our duodenum and on reaching the duodenum, it is going to exist in the duodenum. It's going to come out in the duodenum and from there, it's going to ascend along the biliary tract. It is going to ascend along the biliary tract and adult worms will form. Do you remember all the trematodes? Are they going to be male, female separate or are they going to be hermaphrodites? If you remember, I taught you they are going to be all trematodes are hermaphrodites except for one, the S rule, schistosoma. Schistosoma had male, female, sex separate. So sexes are separate in schistosoma, S for S. Rest, all trematodes are hermaphrodites. Okay, so these hermaphrodite adults are there in the biliary tract. Then the eggs are passed. So here we go, eggs are passed in the stool. Which eggs are passed? Guys, embryonated eggs. Compare it with yesterday. In Paragonimus vestimini, unembryonated eggs were passed. They became embryonated after coming out. Here in the feces, directly embryonated eggs are passed. And these are taken up by the first intermediate host. And do you remember the first is the snail? So remember, 
in the snail do you remember that mnemonic from the egg what is going to come out and what are going to be the stages of development does everyone remember we did a mnemonic called mcrc yesterday the same follows because we are in the same family of trematodes na so this egg is going to be ingested by the snail and what comes out number 1 m miracidia comes out of the egg what does it change to c cyst so m miracidia changes to cyst changes to redia r changes to the cercaria larva miracidia cyst redia cercaria larva what is going to come out of the snail finally cercaria larva will come out of the snail and this cercaria larva is now going to go to your second intermediate host and that's the fish so finally in the fish do you agree that cercaria will develop into a metacercaria and metacercaria larva is what you're going to ingest correct so it's complete cycle completed right and we can do a recap so first and foremost if i ask you what are the three hosts that you see over here you see a man you see a snail and you see a fish from the fish the metacercaria larva is ingested it goes into the duodenum ascends along the biliary tract adult worms are present embryonated eggs are passed these embryonated eggs are ingested by the snail mcrc development occurs the cercaria larva comes out of the snail goes to the fish forms the metacercaria larva and back to the cycle so i think it's as simple as possible with just one thing left what about this egg how does this egg look like so this is the classical book description that you have of the egg it's a very beautiful flask shaped egg and it's got a lid on the top you call it an operculum that lid is known as an operculated egg all the trematodes usually have operculated eggs and they are resting on these shoulders they are resting on these shoulders so let me mark it over here live it like i have let's see it again can you see a lid and can you see it's resting on these shoulders it's resting on these shoulders correct so that's an operculated egg flask shaped with a lid operculum with the shoulders and do you see the opposite end has a knob so one end has a lid and the opposite end has a knob can you see the opposite end having a knob here as well that's an operculated egg so this is the life cycle of clonorchis and is similar to the life cycle of opisthorchis even the egg is similar even the life cycle is similar what do they cause now where are the adult worms residing you will say let me get back the adult worms are residing in the biliary tract so can i say my manifestations of clonorchis will be associated with the biliary tract like cholangitis inflammation cholangitis or cholangiocarcinoma or cholangiocarcinoma yes so remember number 1 there's going to be cholangitis and number 2 there's going to be cholangiocarcinoma cancer of the biliary tract a previous year question which parasite can cause cancer of the biliary tract c for c clonorchis causes cholangiocarcinoma well if you have understood that well enough starting from where uh, coming back to where we started definitive host man first intermediate snail second is fish quickly give me the answer to one question and we are done for the day which of the following statements is incorrect about the organism shown below so see the organism shown below pick up the host number one host man number two snail and i see a fish clonor fish man snail fish clonor fish clonorchis sinensis let me read so i'm sure all of you have read the question and you know the answer so i'm going to go in an opposite manner infective form is metacercaria larva yes true is biliary tract obstruction noted yes definitely eggs show a convex operculum lid on a shoulder exactly the egg that i showed you right now and lastly male and female adult worms are found in the biliary tract well no male and female forms are not separate do you remember this organism is a hermaphrodite 
this organism is a hermaphrodite so male and female are not separate well in that case the incorrect statement was this i hope all of you have understood it with which we finish clonorchis sinensis which is also known as the chinese liver fluke tomorrow we'll do another life cycle at 8:15 and that is also going to be a trematode and after that day after tomorrow we'll compile all the trematodes and do one session of a quick recap so that the full chapter is over okay so that is the plan and all of you know when all to join and where all i've briefed you in the beginning so thank you for joining a small uh, announcement for the fmg students on the an academy platform from 1st of march up till 30th of may there is a new batch that has started for all of you covering all the 19 subjects for those students who are targeting june 2021 exam okay so i'll be taking in the month of march i'm taking microbiology in the month of april i'm taking pathology for you guys and this will be targeting your uh, june exam so micro is going to be 30 hours pathology is going to be 30 hours march and april respectively and i'm looking forward to seeing all of you in class if you wish to subscribe download the app and select the plan that suits you the best i hope to see you all in the special classes also which is tomorrow morning at 7:45 with a small promise that all of you will read about staphylococcus and then come for class so that you can attempt all the questions and i want to see your name on the leaderboard quiz also thank you for joining in guys have a great day